He's going to have to have the Dragon Riders go through the defensive king before they get to the queen. So getting the headhunters through here is going to be a little bit tricky. And the king is going to be the first to engage. And there goes all the headhunters. Gaku's in trouble. The Town Hall 13 Cup comes down to this. The semifinals. We have Okidoki, which has Gaku from the Queen Walkers. But on the other side... We're over there with some former Space Station gaming players who played in the World Championship as well, like Big Castro, Marinal, Bernal, but Gaku's not alone over here. He's got another World Championship caliber player on his team with uh, Ryuta as well, who played in GS in the World Championship. So this is a fitting semi-finals match, and I thought this was going to be a grand finals match. That would have been an insane grand finals match to have these two teams collide, but the way that a lot of these other Town Hall Cup tournaments have gone is the underdog teams, the unknown teams, ended up coming on top. So this is actually one of the first times we've had teams full of uh, pro players make it to the very end of the tournament. So we'll see what happens here. But we have Arthur starting us off here, playing on his account. Shinon with a Warden Walk into Super Witches. And in the last round, in that quarterfinals match, we had almost every single war come down to time in one form or another. Either they're forcing people to take extremely risky attacks to make it up, make up for time as they were both T's in double perfect wars. And it was a pretty wild quarterfinals match there. It was all, this, all the quarterfinals were insane. <laughs> it, was, it was absolutely nuts. But either way. Shinan will make his way forward into this multi-inferno. He's got the siege breaks with the funnel on the outside. The king out there. One super which goes to the outside. Three go to the inside. Get the hound popped. And he's got the jump into the core of the base there. Now the jump is going to give him access to both of the infernos. But it does not give the king and the P.E.K.K.A. and the siege breaks troops access out of that left side compartment. So they're going to have to go through there, find out the road champion, and then find a wall to attack and get out of there. That's going to leave the eagle artillery playing to the backside. Need to wait until he gets the defensive king and queen dealt with, and then he can slip in his world champion to go in there and clear that compartment. But he can use the march forward. He's got one minute to clear out another 50% of the base. He's got to move fast from this point here, but here comes the hogs out of the siege barracks. We're going to get into the artillery. Now would be a good time to send the world champion right as the defensive king and queen getting gate there. Everything is perfectly paced right now, but he needs something to split off and go get this multi inferno down. Queen is kind of teasing the shift there, but not taking it just yet. She might now. No, I take that back. She's going to go north. She's going to keep on going north here. He's going to be pushing the time. Come on, Arthur. Move it, move it. That's the biggest problem with Super Witches is time is always a struggle here, especially after a long water walk. We'll pop his world champion ability, and unfortunately, he's going to end up falling short on time. So we're starting off the semifinals. With a miss out of the gate here. However, he will climb the percentage up as high as he can get it. But there's no way he'll finish it in time. There we go. It is a 90% here to start us off. We'll pass it over to Age of War Brazil. We'll see what the Brazilian pros have. Oseus will strike with a queen charge. Lalo, he's got a dra an Inferno Dragon, I mean. Infer Dragon can go in here and get the Eagle Artillery down if the Queen decides to not take it. The Queen can reach that storage over the wall, so I don't think she has a reason to go in. He does put the Invisibility down. He doesn't need to put the Invisibility down there, as the Queen would have reached over the wall and hit the storage regardless. But now she's split up to the left side, and she has... Actually, I think she might take the turn into the... Okay, he doesn't want her to. Okay, that was a big investment, honestly. Two Invisibilities to set that pathing was... A lot. But he'll go ahead and put in a balloon. And I assume he puts in the Inferno Dragon into the Eagle Artillery. But the Queen will now need to take the turn into the Multi. And she should have no problem doing that. I'm not too worried about it. I am a little bit worried about the path that she takes. And putting her healers into danger. A bit early on to that Baby Dragon to provide the tanking with the Queen on the Arch Tower. Has to burn another spell on the Freeze. But that Inferno Dragon able to clear out that entire compartment over there. We'll get shut down by the air defense. It's fine. One minute and 30 seconds has been used so far as the queen gets close to pulling the defensive CC. We'll find out the defensive queen. They'll go ahead and start in the king in from the right side. He does get that in for a dragon to fight off the defensive king. That was really valuable right there to preserve his 
own king. They're going to freeze up the defensive CC and the queen together. They're taking the super minion shots, but he'll quickly have those super minions run out of long range shots and move in. The queen can take him out and I assume she can continue on to the town hall here, but he does have a single inferno blocking her path. Quite a couple of balloons over to the outside to help the queen get encouraged to take the turn into the middle of the base there. I'm going to hold attention of a single inferno for now while the queen makes a near pass. A lot of different things going on simultaneously here, but he is moving strong. World champion is deployed or no? Where is she? She's under the lalo. I see her now. But he does get the king that uh, ends up taking the single inferno out of the way there after the slammer open up the core of the base rage up the queen 30 seconds to go easy clean up pop that rc ability swag and osaius will get us into our first lead of the ward here for agent brazil pass it over to okie dokie see what they can do vanch will strike next playing out of his account tamioka We'll see what we can do here with a Sui Hero Lalo. Started at the top of the base here with the King and a Headhunter to go after the defensive King. I assume he will get funneled up ahead, probably by the Queen, around the corner to drive the King in. There we go. Down comes the Queen with the Giant. And the Queen will split off and go to the Multi Inferno here. There's a wall break to get her to the base there, and Ice Cold to provide some tanking. But. Oh, I. <laughs> I was like, for a second, I was confused. I was like, where are his pets? And then I remembered, oh yeah, this is Town Hall 30. I, I forgot. I forgot that there are no pets down here. <laughs> but over on the far right side of the base, he throws down some skeleton spells and his Road Champion. Blanking in that area with a giant as well, trying to preserve that Road Champion. A couple of ground skellies in the area, but the convenient thing about the ground, uh, the skellies and the skelly spells is you actually end up dealing with some of them, but he's with the baby dragon to take out a big stack of ground skellies that came out of the ground as well. RC still has her ability, we'll pop it and clear out the rest of that compartment. Goes invisible to try to get a little bit more than that. If she gets that expo, that'd be valuable. But she ends up splitting out to the right side, chasing ground skellies. A little bit unfortunate there. Nice job, RC. Let's start in Lalo. Maybe the world champion can get behind some of the other defenses here and stay safe for a minute. I think she will. So she'll uh, dish out some more damage here before she ultimately goes down. But the defensive world champion is up ahead here. He's got the headhunters on their way in. The ward ability is about to go off for the town hall anyways. Pop it right now. Get the defensive world champion out of the way there. But now the headhunters are crossing through under that ward ability. But they are not going to reach the queen because the tornado trap catches them. Holding them back. And all the boons right there went down as well. That's a bit of a problem here. How does he get the defensive queen down now? Got some ice pups in the area. Pups are gonna lock onto that queen and give a little bit of slowdown effect added to her, but with no additional support there, like headhunters or a champion, any kind of pets. The defensive queen needs to go down here, but wow, she stayed distracted for a really long time, a lot longer than I thought she would. And the ice pups actually are able to take her. So there we go. That was kind of impressive right there. It is going to be a triple. With a swag freeze on top of that. Had that as he potentially might have needed it. But uh, I guess he had a skeleton spell that he dropped onto the queen. And that was able to get the distraction. The slowdown of the strikes there from the ice pups. And he gets it done. We got a first triple for Okie Dokie. Picastro will strike with a skelly donut. This is the player who played in the world championship as well. In... Finland a couple months ago. I was a Town Hall 14 though, but Town 14 and Town 13 are very similar. So if you're ever trying to find out what strategies are good at these levels, Town 13, 14, and 15 are all very similar, but there are some distinct differences between Town Hall 13 and 14. One of the biggest is that Town Hall Poison and how you deal with that. But a Subi Lalo is always, always a good option, regardless of what that town hall is capable of outputting. The goal here is to get the queen to the town hall and take it down with the queen ability. So anything you can do to support the queen is gonna be helpful. You don't have things like you do a town hall 14 and 15 with all those pets to give your heroes a lot more support there naturally. So he's using skeleton spells there to provide the tanking. And some sneaky goblins to increase the damage output in that area. But the skeleton spell giving some long-term tanking there. The queen tra transition through. And will lock on the town hall and take it down. All right. No issues with there. 
He's got the Skelly Donut that was already able to clear out the Inferno in the middle of the base there, which in his King and his Road Champion were able to break the ring of defenses on the left side, taking out everything from the edge of the base there to the hole that was created by the Skelly Donut. And now with no CC to fight, the girls got the value they needed. And Lalo has free reign with clear pathing across the top of the base there. And so as he puts the... Warden was the a ploy over on the far right side of the base there to get through with the Lalo to go in after the defensive queen. Got all those headhunters under the warden ability protection. The slammer was providing the tanking up top there with the hounds and easy push into the last couple of defenses on the base here. He's got one haste, so that single inferno locks onto his stone summer and opens it up. He should be okay here. He'll go and pop the haste now. There's a dragon rider in the mix as well. Lots of people like to throw the dragon riders. And the slammer to go after the Eagle Artillery area so the Lalo can go in and handle the area next to the defensive Roar Champion. And it seems like he's got it 100% under control here. The slammer's going to survive to the end. It is going to be another triple here. Age of Brazil, nor Age of War Brazil, not going to let these Japanese players have the lead just yet. They will maintain it. And that's going to put some pressure back over as Gaku goes down on defense. Gaku from the Queen Walkers. The star of the show here and probably the biggest reason why a lot of you are here to watch this one today. Let's see if Gaku, our defending world champion, can get it done here at Town Hall 13. He's coming in with a queen charge into Dragon Riders. Opens up with that blimp to sail in and secure the Town Hall takedown. The queen is going to break her way off to the right. Using the Town Hall as a funneling point here, but the blimp also has the extra added benefit of pulling the defensive CC. Can make his way over to the scatter shot on the right side of the base there, engage the defensive world champion. But he will want to get access into that multi inferno. He can't just leave that multi behind, so he's going to need some additional support over there. He can't just let the queen coast past that multi inferno. He needs to have a strong push, probably from the king in from the right hand corner to help drive the queen in. And there he is, right on cue. Where our champion will join, and we're finding some tests over there as well. Ground skellies are popping up. A Valkyrie comes in to help deal with the Grand Skellies. Everything is thought of here as Gaku continues to make his way forward. That air defense down and just get a couple strikes off as his heal is here, but he will take the turn and go into the Multi Inferno. And from that Multi Inferno area, he can continue across the middle of the base. Where the Queen, the Queen, the Queen, the Queen. Don't, don't. Oh, all right, he goes ahead and makes a couple of buildings invisible as the Queen was chasing some Grand Skellies and getting off path for a little bit there, but he gets her path corrected. And she's still going to continue through the middle base here, but he's going to engage this single Inferno. So now pacing is everything here as he makes his queen move into a dangerous position. He's going to have to have the Dragon Riders go through the defensive king before they get to the queen. So getting the headhunters through here is going to be a little bit tricky. And the king is going to be the first to engage and there goes all the headhunters. Gaku's in trouble. Come on, get through the Queen of Popper ability. Lucky he's got that Queen there to get the defensive Queen down. That is absolutely critical right now. Gets this single Inferno engaged and freezes it to make sure that Dragon Rider is able to take it down. It's a fraction of HP, but the Queen is staying alive here. Pops the Rage onto the Queen, getting some healing. She's hanging on by a thread, does make it through. The Expo goes down, though, is all the healers. Doctor drop out of the sky here. He's got a lot of Infer or a lot of Dragon Rider still moving. A little bit of a dangerous position, but he's still okay. Still got some time to work with. Taking some black bombs. Another dragon runner goes down. Down to two, but that's enough to direct the warden targeting. If he can get the warden lock on the arch tower, even if the dragon runner goes down, the warden can finish the job, but they're both going to survive. And Gaku, after some scary moments all throughout the attack there, is able to hold it together, able to pull through, and his pacing as he made his way through to that... Scattershot and into that single inferno did him a lot of favors there definitely had some things go wrong the traps from Marinol holding him up there, but he pulls through in the end and okie dokie will stay in this war Marinol is live Biggest content creator out of Brazil Played in the world championship of Clash of Clans under the name Space Station Gaming nowadays playing for War and Glory we're coming in with an Inferno Dragon Rider attack. Lots and lots of skeleton spells here. Attacking at the flank of the Town Hall so we can descend in the blimp and use the Town Hall as a funneling point there. The Dragon Rider deploys over the left side there with one Inferno Dragon separated from the main pack there to go clear out the trash in the area. But the CC is pulled by the blimp. Does secure the Town Hall takedown. That's all he's looking for in the area. Needs the CC to split off to the right and go 
faced a main punch here, but you can see that all the trash was cleared over to the side there, and he's able to use that Town Hall as a strong funnel point here. He's got this Skeletal Spell up ahead here, taking out the Defensive Queen, holding the Defensive CC under control, and making the Single Inferno not be able to target anything. When we see lots of Single Infernos, we like to use these Inferno Dragons, but you can't get through the Multis with that, and so you have to have the Freeze on standby. Also for the air defenses, but if the air defenses are spread to the wide outside of the base there, then you can have the Royal Champion slip through and pick them off on the backside, which is what we're looking for. We want to use any kind of dragon or air attack. When air defenses are central on the base, we think Lalo. When air defenses are wide on the base, think some form of dragons. But he does have the Inferno Dragon starting to thin out a little bit now, and the Royal Champion King and Queen will start to wrap around. He did protect them all the way through the start of the deck there, so... They're all looking pretty healthy. More skeletal spells in the backside to keep the def defenses distracted for them as well. Royal Champion steps in. One Inferno Dragon still moving. Still looking strong here. Plenty of time left. Never a time issue on this attack generally. Loses the ward into a Black Air Bomb. Got an RC ability though. Queen ability still intact here. Yep, nothing's going to stop this, guys. He's going the distance. Marnal not going to give up the lead here. Will stay perfect for Age of War. And they did come into this war in their quarterfinals match with a perfect as well. So it is kind of what we expected. It was almost more unexpected that we had Okie Doki start off the war with that time fail. But those super witches definitely can burn you. And that's what's holding them back right now. As usual, time is the biggest enemy of Town Hall 13 when you have this caliber player. Another world champion ship contender. Ryuda. Normally plays in GS for this Japanese squad. We'll be striking with a Queen Charge and a Hog Miner Hybrid. Queen will be diving towards the Town Hall. Typically, if we're going to do a Queen Charge Hog Miner Hybrid, we're going to make one of two approaches with the Queen. We need to either take the Town Hall down or we will start at the Eagle Artillery. One way or another, we need to have the Queen take out a full quadrant of the base and deal with the CC. So usually what decides which side we're going to attack, whether that be Eagle Artillery or the Town Hall, is where is the CC? If the CC is by the Town Hall, we're going out to the Town Hall side of the base there, which can make it a little bit easier for the defender to try to judge where they might come in with. But he'll go ahead and fight out the Teslas. The Queen will hug the walls as she rounds the corner there, which does encourage her to step through the open corners. And it does, unfortunately, put her healers into a dangerous position. So he has to have the freeze on standby. Healers are in danger. He'll go ahead and freeze it right as it activates and preserve the HP of his healers. And then he can continue on from there. Single Inferno's up ahead here, so he'll need to put the hybrid in from the top side to make sure that Single Inferno doesn't lock onto the Queen. And if you get the Queen to transition out of that compartment and go to somewhere else, that'd be really useful. But looks like, actually, He's going to try to take advantage of the hole that is next to that single Inferno and try to drive her backwards into that hole. So Ryuta definitely playing with fire here, literally, as he gets ready to charge his queen directly at that single Inferno in the middle of the hybrid. So some multitasking is going to be required here. He'll go ahead and take some scattershot fire as he makes his approach to the base there. Throws a heal spell down to get him through that initially. And the queen will start to take the turn. He puts it in a rocket balloon to surge in there. And that does get the black bomb. Multiple traps go up by the single inferno. Queen getting targeted now. He has to burn her ability to get through. But that ability will generate a lot of archers and give her the support that she needs. She'll step in, take it, transfers her healers off over to the miners. It's not a bad thing right now. Queen is safe and the miners can definitely use the healing as they go into the scattershot. Over to the right side, he is engaging the defensive king. Does he have any headhunters there? I see headhunters hiding under the storage there. Get the defensive king down. Get that road champion through. Get the eagle artillery down. Taking the eagle artillery right there to the big pack of miners as they do not split off to go to the scatter shot. Wait, there's one. There's one. The queen picks the healers back up. She breaks the wall. She steps her way in. Yui making his way through with these miners. Regrouping on the right side. Get it in front of our champion. There's the rage. The queen takes the scatter shot until she goes down. And the healers will now transfer back over and carry him to the finish. Ryuda gets it done once again. And they'll keep this war within reach. Zamson live with a queen charge into Lalo. Starting in with the king. Through the eagle artillery down south here. The Log Launcher going to come in with the King. Does that mean he's also going to deploy the Warden and the Royal Champion in there? He definitely could if he wants to. Back to the big Kill Squad Queen Charge Lalo value. 
we know that they like their big queen charges here and we haven't even seen Bernal go in yet so we'll see because he'll be the closing attack of the war and he had some crazy crazy lalos in the quarterfinals but he does have this log launcher trying to run down this inferno in the middle of the base there getting a couple of the cc troops dealt with but the last log is able to take that inferno down rage up the yetis that came out those yetis will search over and get the defensive queen engaged there potentially uh, okay, they're running off there, chasing the headhunter, but they go back, they go back, okay. Get her, oh, does not get her down. She stays standing, that's a little bit of a problem, but he does get the CC fully drawn out there, and the queen will engage it and take it down now. World champion over the right side, able to get this scatter shot under control. Goes invisible to preserve her for a little bit longer. He's an ultimately... No, she's surviving longer than I thought she would. Now, he is at 50% there. The... The kill squad and queen charge investment was large enough so he can start the Lalo at the town hall. So he gets it activated so the balloons can target it. But the most important thing here is going to be timing the headhunters with the ward ability. Here they come. They get protected by the ward ability so they can surge across there and engage the defensive queen. They're going to arrive right as his queen engages the queen. And they will assist with the takedown, preserving his queen ability. Got a lot of base left, though. A lot of balloons left, though. Got a rage, no freezes as he makes his way to the multi inferno, keep an eye out for red air bombs. All of his balloons are heavily clumped up as he gets struck by that wizard tower. There's the multi inferno beating down on it. It's a lot of incoming damage. Get this multi, get this multi. The multi's not going down. He's got a lot of force still moving though. The queen is still strong. I think he still has it under control there. The balloons are not going to be necessary to lock in the triple on this one. He can go and swag his queen ability and it is still going to maintain a perfect war. So far, for Age of Brazil, and if they can get one more, Bernal can get another triple, then Age of War Brazil will move on to the Grand Finals and eliminate the Japanese team. But we got Oxyride coming in for the next one. Let's go. We have a... Blimp sailing in to land on top of the scatter shot and the defensive queen here for this one with super wizards inside. Able to get that scatter shot down, get the CC pulled, and we'll chain off of the storage here to get some damage into taking out that sweeper. Doesn't get the inferno out of it. It's okay. We'll have that hound drawn out to the north side of the base here. And he can fight the hound and then move off to the side. That's one of the biggest advantages of using the blimp. In any attack there, whether you want to use with a hybrid or a queen charge or a sui, it doesn't matter. If you can get a blimp to go in there and pull the CC while taking out a couple of key targets and forming the funnel, that is maximum value out of a blimp. And that's exactly what we're looking for in these attacks. But as he comes in with the heroes basically opposite of the town hall, he's got to gather the percentage here while he sets up to get ready to go through that town hall with the Lalo. He gets a headhunter down for the defensive king we'll get that down without an issue get that inferno out of the way here the heroes have pathing to cross through he puts in looks like a giant and a wizard off to the left side of the base there with the royal champion to collapse in the pathing does not have a max level royal champion here but we'll work with what he's got the king will Continue to tank out in front of the Queen of the World Champion as he cr approaches 50% here. He should be able to reach the 50% right as he gets to the Town Hall. But once again, keep an eye out for the Headhunters that'll need to cross through and take that defensive World Champion down. That's going to be very, very important here that he times the Ward ability with the Headhunters being deployed to go in after her. Here they come now, right as he's about to engage the Town Hall. He's going to have the timing perfect. Pacing's perfect. We'll have those Headhunters get through there and get that World Champion down. No issues. This world champion on offense is going to get taken up by that expo, though. But with all those ground expos and cannons in the area, that's why we have to protect those headhunters so much. He's able to get through. No issues. And it looks like he's got plenty for the triple on this one. So there we go. Oxy Ride gets it done. A hound survives until the end. His queen's still alive on the outside. She had her ability attack there. The world champion has made it through to the end as well. She gets targeted a little bit there, but she's going to survive. And he will get her right into cleanup. So Oxy Ride gets it done. It's going to come down to the final attack from Age of War Brazil to decide who moves on to the Grand Finals. 90% is the threshold. Yeah, we might have the names of the players attached to the accounts wrong. So this is either Selenio or it is Bernal. I'm not sure which, 
but it's hard to keep track of exactly which account belongs to which of these pro players. It's one of them. One way or another, we have a player who played in the World Championship in Finland, closing out our war here. We'll decide who moves on to the Grand Finals. We'll see if we can get it done here with a Queen Charge into Zap Lalo. No, I lied to you. I, there's no Queen Charge. It is a, it is a Zap Sui Hero Lalo. As he'll dive in his queen towards the town hall. Once again, it doesn't really matter what town hall level you're playing at. If you can get the queen to be protected all the way in there and be able to pop her ability to specifically target the town hall, you're going to be in a very, very good spot. She's only got a bomb tower and a wizard tower that'll be able to strike her for now. But the world champion and the king are able to clear out that right side compartment, get the defensive world champion down, power through the entire Tesla farm and the traps in the area. And now he just needs to preserve his queen long enough to get her in and pop her ability to secure the town hall takedown. If he gets that, he should be in a very, very good position here. But he gets the tornado trap triggered early with that giant. That's really helpful. The CC is staying distracted over the right side long enough that the Queen is able to step her way in. She can now pop her ability, but that ability not only going to get the Town Hall down, it'll also probably get the Defensive Road Champion. But he does get distracted by some grounds, or some uh, archers there, I mean. So he's not going to get the Road Champion, potentially. He gets in a couple of Headhunters, though. And the Queen does lock on. The Headhunters hit a Spring Trap. They end up going down, get the Road Champion. Okay, he burns a Freeze, able to get the Defensive Road Champion out of the way there. And that was his only Headhunter, so he took a bit of a risk there, sending them in right that, at that point. But now he has a couple of different options on where he wants to send in a ward. He decides to put him in from the top side, where he can get the protection through the Multi-Infernos and the Scatter Shot, while the Slammer and the Dragon Rider handle that Eagle Artillery area. The Slammer's gonna cut across, get the Multi-Inferno down, looking strong here. Needs 91% to lock in the win. But he lost a lot of blooms up on the top edge there. Multi-Inferno's gonna start to beat down. Sweeper knocking him back a little bit there. More haste on the left side there to drop in some blooms into the air defense. He's got plenty of blooms on standby still. Another six yet to be deployed. He can throw him down to the cleanup. There's the 90% as he quickly takes the defenses down, throws down the remainder of his blooms to finish it out. And Age of War Brazil picks up the perfect war. And that will advance them to the grand finals of the Town Hall 13 Cup. Brilliant stuff here, guys. That was an incredible, insane war. Unfortunate those Super Witches ended up with a time fail at the start of the war. Just a little bit too long of a warden walk was all the cost okie dokie. Their chances at getting into the grand finals. But that's the way it plays out sometimes. Still, 15 to 14. A very solid performance from both sides. And Age of War Brazil. Age, Age of War Brazil. Gonna move on to the grand finals.